Hello, Vinyl Community, Mark here again from Sound Matters, and in today's video, we are going back to basics. We are discussing how to set the counterweight on your tone arm for the most appropriate tracking force that applies to your cartridge. So this is gonna get the best performance. Of course, this is a big part of turntable setup for getting the best possible sound quality, but also preserving our records for the long term. We'll also touch on anti-skate setting as part of this video as well. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. first thing we're going to want to do no matter what deck you have is take the anti-skate and remove it from the process so on this particular deck it's the Technics SL 1500 which uses a dial I'm going to want to set that down to zero next up lift the tone arm from its rest and adjust the counterweight backwards and forwards until the tone arm balances horizontally in a level position once the tone arm balances independently and is level your tone arm now has a tracking force of zero grams this can be quite a delicate and frustrating process to get right and of course we've always got that element of risk that we might suddenly drop the stylus onto the turntable in some way so we want to be careful and very slow and patient in this process. Now that we're tracking at zero grams, we want to return the tone arm to its rest and adjust the dial accordingly. The counterweight dial turns independently of the weight, so being careful not to move the weight in the process, we want to set this dial to zero. Before we can adjust the counterweight, we need to know what the optimum tracking force is for our particular cartridge. In this instance, it happens to be 1.8 grams according to the manufacturer specification. So we're gonna adjust our dial now to reflect that. So as you can see, whilst I turn the weight, the dial moves with it now so that we can get a good, pretty accurate reading of what our tracking force should be. So we're adjusting now for 1.8 grams, of course. So now in theory, the final step is to reapply our anti-skate weight. And the general rule of thumb here is that you adjust this to the same amount as your downward tracking force. So I've set this dial to 1.8 and this should get me in the ballpark of where the anti-skate should be. So while this entire process is pretty good for getting you quite close, I like to make sure that the tracking force is actually what it's set to. So you can use a tracking force gauge like this one to accurately measure what the actual downward force is and very often what you will find is you can see in this clip here that I've got pretty close it's 1.78 or 1.79 but with a little bit of extra tweaking I can get this to track 100% at 1.8. One neat trick that you can use to check your anti-skating setting is working properly is by using a flat disc or a blank side of a record. Now this is a 12 inch single that is single sided so I can use the other side to see what is actually happening in terms of the anti-skate setting and you can see here that actually set to 1.8 it's actually applying too much force in the opposite direction. What we're aiming for is to counteract that general bias of the tone arm to move towards the center of the disc and apply uh, an equal force in the opposite direction so that the stylus will sit centrally in the groove. We can use a flat record to get closer to this process, but the best way of all is to actually use a test record and to use your ears. I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can buy a good test record and of course the stylus tracking force gauge that I've mentioned in this video as well. So that concludes today's demonstration. I hope you found this useful and helpful. If you've got any tips or tricks to add down in the comments below to make this process easier, then of course I'd love to hear from you. Add those down in the comments below. And if you are new to this channel, please do consider subscribing and we'll see you in that next one. Keep spinning.